Well, thank you all for coming once again. Uh, my name is Philip Lemich, and, and, and I'm going to be presenting the paper entitled User Mobility Simulator for Full Immersive Multi-User Virtual Reality with Redirected Walking. Uh, this is a work that has been co-authored by uh, a PhD student at the University of Antwerp, Jakob Struje, and, and, and our uh, PhD supervisor, Professor uh, Jeroen Famai. Uh, I will I will start by trying to outline some 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 directions of, for the future in terms of virtual reality. Uh, so uh, virtual reality brings a lot of promise. Uh, it's expected to kind of revolution or revolutionize the uh, the human perception and, and and interaction on a very high level. Uh, and therefore, it has utility, or you can even call it transformation potential. In, in a variety of domains, including healthcare, education, tourism, and et cetera. Uh, in terms of how the future VRs are going uh, to look like with future applications and what are going to be their enhancements, uh, one, one, one kind of prom promising and direction is, is, is to, to advance the VR systems by uh, enhancing their immersiveness. Uh, this means uh, the enhancement in immersiveness can be kind of done on, along three main directions. Uh, one is enhancing the quality of video content that is being streamed towards the VR users. Uh, the second one is uh, cutting the wire and essentially enabling a truly wireless uh, content delivery to the virtual reality users. This is kind of intuitive. We would like to avoid the, the, the tripping hazards and increase the movement range of the virtual reality users. Uh, and then also supporting multi-user VR setups. And, and, and by multi-user VR setups, we assume uh, setups in which multiple co-located users uh, are, are, are kind of utilizing a, a virtual reality setup in a way that the action of one user in the virtual world affects the experience of the other potentially co-located user. Uh, okay, based on that, uh, we, we can kind of uh, derive some, some, some features of the future virtual multi-user virtual reality setups. We would like to have constraint-free mobility of the vir virtual reality users in, in the virtual world. Uh, we would like to, to have an always increasing quality of the delivered video to the VR users. Uh, and we would like these uh, VR setups to be uh, deployed in constrained, specialized uh, physical virtual reality environments, setups. And then this is in, in contrast to deploying such systems anywhere, I, we believe that kind of uh, specialized places uh, will be used to avoid environmental obstacles, tripping hazards, and, and to also uh, specialized infrastructure will most probably uh, be needed for supporting such systems. Uh, if we have a kind of constrained uh, physical setups and we would like to enable unconstrained uh, free, free kind of roaming of the virtual reality users in the, in the virtual world, then we we'll probably need redirected walking. Uh, uh, the idea of redirected walking is, is to kind of, mm, and as shown in the examples in the figure at the bottom of the slide, the idea is to uh, uh, to, to use redirected walking to, for the users, for the virtual reality users, to avoid uh, uh, collisions between the co-located users and collisions between the users and the boundaries of the physical setups in which the VR setups are, are deployed. And, and this is to ideally be done imperceivably by directing the users in the physical space in a sense that they do not really perceive that they are being redirected, as shown on the right-hand side in the figure. In terms of wireless networking infrastructure that need to be used uh, for supporting si such kind of real-time high throughput uh, video delivery to the VR users, under mobility, etc., uh, the most promising technological candidate is, 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 is to utilize high frequency wireless communication in contrast to utilizing kind of traditional lower frequency sub, sub six gigahertz wireless communication. And this is because of those frequencies, there is a large bandwidth available, which implies that we can transmit a lot of video content. Uh, millimeter wave is the most promising practical candidates and, 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 and in millimeter wave, which are the frequencies from 30 to 300 gigahertz, there is a very high attenuation and, 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 uh, and path loss, uh, uh, kind of comparatively much higher than, than at uh, sub six gigahertz. So for that reason, uh, uh, we need to, to utilize kind of directional communication at both transmit and receive side, which would mean that from the access point, we kind of have to 
focus the energy of our millimeter wave beams toward the, the ideally toward the direction of the head mounted device while at the same time at the head mounted device level we have to focus the energy of our beams ideally towards the access point those ideally is it's because ideally we would like to maintain line of sight connectivity between the devices because this is optimizing the 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 the, the throughput um and and, and uh, in the setups with with mobility which which this setup is going to be given that the vr users are immersed in the virtual worlds and then they're they are constrained free in terms of mobility in the virtual world uh, the directional millimeter wave links uh, will have to track the directions of the users and 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 in essence ideally they, they would have to predict the near future locations and head rotations of the users so that this prediction can be used for optimizing the tracking performance of the beams at the transmit and receive side and such a setup is on a high level depicted in the figure at the bottom uh, so from here i think it becomes a bit kind of intuitive it becomes straightforward that some design decisions made in the virtual world for example how complex is the virtual movement trajectory of the VR users in the virtual world will also affect the, the, the performance of the supporting network because tracking and, and prediction of the near future trajectories of the users in the physical world would be harder. So, and, 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 and vice versa, some decisions made for the physical world essentially made by the network engineers will affect the user experience in the physical world, in the virtual world, pardon, sorry. Uh, so, for example, one, one, one straightforward example is the size of the physical space in which the, the virtual reality users uh, setups and users are kind of deployed, uh, which would imply that if the space is very small, then there will be a lot of redirects, a lot of perceivable redirects, and this will negatively affect the quality of experience of the users. So based on those observations, we see a clear need for a simulation tool that is able to provide such a mapping. So a mapping between the virtual reality users' trajectories in the, in the unconstrained the virtual world and their consequent mobility in the constrained physical setups. Uh, so but the main functionality, the main capability that we want to enable is the aforementioned mapping between the virtual world mobility and the physical world mobility. And, and with the several goals in mind, the first is enabling, enabling rapid assessments of the effect of a certain virtual trajectory given a redirected walking algorithm. And, 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 and uh, the main idea is, uh, so the main goal is the macro scale, uh, apologies. So this going can be can separated into two main directions. So the macro scale assessment where we, we are interested in the number of perceivable resets experienced by each users which kind of gives an insight to the to the virtual reality application designers on, on, on what the user experience is going to be and also the micro scale assessment on the short-term prediction accuracy of the user's physical trajectories which gives insights uh, to the, on the complexity of supporting a certain virtual trajectory by the the underlying uh, infrastructure from here, you can derive a set of, of design requirements. And the first one is a supporting simulation in a reasonable time frame. So we want to test uh, for a large number of smaller hypotheses. For example, uh, virtual trajectories are probably going to be very complex. Uh, those, those virtual experiences can last for a long time. And people are going to be moving around. So to, to get insights on, on, on how the, the, net, the, 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 the redirected walking is going to uh, perform uh, we, we see the need for distributing those virtual uh, separating those trajectories into smaller manageable chunks and then kind of uh, uh, providing testing on a variety of smaller hypotheses uh, the second uh, the second one is as i mentioned we, we we believe that this tool can be used by by by, by people with a different heterogeneous expertise so so our aim is to provide a straightforward tool not something complex uh, and then we, be, we believe that the redirected walking will eventually be advanced. For example, other aspects of simulation as well, but redirected walking in particular. And so we, we wanted to make a tool fully modular, extensible, and, and, and with, where the modules are easily replaceable. Uh, so uh, to summarize, the design requirements is to, are to provide a highly modular tool that can carry out rapid simulations and be used by people with different expertise. 
This slide provides uh, details on the on the design and the implementation of the simulator. In terms of the design, uh, one can define uh, the virtual world with, with with a number of of VR users, their initial locations, the virtual trajectories, and one has to define the the outline and the size of the physical setup where this virtual uh, setup is going to be deployed. And then one can simulate using our simulator. Uh, the movement of the users along those virtual trajectories and the simulator maps those, those movements to the physical trajectories of all users. So you can see that the trajectories of three users in this case that are unlimited, unconstrained in the, in the virtual worlds, this kind of maps uh, to, to the physical movement, which is constrained by the sizes of the setup. And then the output also includes a set of performance metrics. As I said, those performance metrics can be categorized into uh, macro scale performance metrics, uh, which are the number of hard resets, perceivable resets experienced by each user, and also the distances between two of those consecutive perceivable resets, where intuitively the goal is to minimize the number of uh, res uh, perceivable resets and therefore maximize the distances between uh, neighboring or kind of two consecutive uh, resets. And then in terms of micro scale, we, we've developed several machine learning tools that, that can uh, predict the near future trajectories, physical trajectories uh, of, of the VR users. And at the same time, they, they can also, based on the mapping between virtual trajectories and physical trajectories, they can assess the accuracy of this prediction. And uh, in terms of implementation, we're, everything is modular, as mentioned, so everything is easily replaceable, extendable, etc. And we are supporting currently two redirected walking algorithms, uh, one aiming at imperceivable redirection. And if this one fails, then the other one comes in uh, to perceivably re-steer the user in the opposite direction from the one where it is heading. Uh, the tool is uh, developed in Python. Python is kind of straightforward. Python is uh, used seamlessly, but people by different different experiences, expertise. So we believe uh, by using Python, we can reach to, to a heterogeneous uh, public uh, uh, or heterogeneous researchers. Uh, in terms of performance evaluation and demonstration, our goal was to capture the simulation runtimes uh, of different set of experiments that we have defined in order to demonstrate the current functionalities of the simulator. Uh, so the parameters that we're going to be uh, changing in our simulation, in our performance evaluation, are the sizes of the physical environment and the number of users. And we're making several assumptions. One, we will be assuming for this work that the, uh, the, 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 the movement trajectories of the users in the virtual worlds are, are just kind of a random walk. Uh, which can be true, doesn't have to be true. One can also replace such walking with, with, with uh, different types of uh, virtual movement trajectory. And we will be using the two algorithms for redirected walking that I've mentioned, where one will be used for imperceivable redirected walking, while the other will be uh, invoked in there if there is a need for a hard reset. Uh, and, and, and the table delivers a few parameters, so the, the hyper parameters. Uh, of, of the uh, redirected walking algorithms and also gives you the simulation runtime, which is uh, in the simulated time that is uh, 3,600 seconds and, 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 and where we consider uh, 10 points per second, 10 movement. So the movement trajectory is, is, is defined by 10 points per, per second. Okay, uh, this is a snapshot of the results. Uh, so uh, here we are considering two different sizes of an environment. Uh, the first, one, it's, it's kind of a rectangular shape uh, or square-like shape, uh, size five by five and 10 by 10. Uh, um, on the x-axis, we have uh, the number of collocated users in a physical VR setup. Uh, and that is regardless of, of, of the, which graph we are looking at. And on the y-axis, we so the, the kind of the, the, the bluish uh, subgraphs are the ones depicting the performance metrics, both on the macro scale and on the micro scale. And the ones at the bottom are depicting the execution run time of our experiments. So kind of, as we can see at the top, uh, the number of hard resets decreases as we increase the size of an environment and also increases with the increase in the number of collocated uh, virtual reality users. 
And this is just to show that the kind of intuitively the performance of the simulator makes sense. Now, as we decrease the number of, uh, of, of hard resets, then we kind of experience the increase in the distance between two uh, consecutive perceivable resets, which is depicted in kind of a second set of graphs going from the top. And then uh, the short term traject physical trajectory prediction accuracy is depicted uh, in the kind of uh, third set of subgraphs uh, from the top. Uh, you can see it here and here. And as we can see here, uh, again, with the number of users, uh, uh, the prediction accuracy uh, is uh, decreased, the, the, the error is increased, uh, while uh, the, 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 this effect is much less pronounced for the, uh, for the changes in the, the sizes of the physical VR setups. And as said, we can simulate, uh, for example, as a snapshot, the first thing to say in terms of execution time is the size of the environment does not play a role in the execution time, but the number of, of, of collocated user do the users does. Uh, so as we increase the number of users, we get kind of higher execution times of our simulations. But for example, for eight users, so we have an execution time of uh, 1500 seconds, which be we believe is reasonable and enough uh, for us to be able to use this tool for rapid assessments of a variety of different hypotheses. And now just in order to put this into context, I would like to mention that uh, in Jakob's PhD I've mentioned at the beginning, we are considering uh, high frequency wireless networks for supporting multimedia applications and in particular for supporting uh, full immersive virtual reality applications. Here, we are envisioning the usage of context information uh, for, for those, uh, the, the, this line of sight tracking of the head mounted device and line of sight tracking of the access point from the perspective of the head mounted device. And this is depicted on the left hand side. Uh, so. Uh, you can see kind of uh, as the user moves, the, the, the head mounted device uh, determines the pose of the users and it transmits uh, the location data to the access point and this location data is then utilized uh, by, the, uh, by the access point to kind of uh, to focus the beams in that direction of the users. Uh, if there is an obstacle in the environment, then we envision multi-access point uh, handover between two different access points so that we avoid kind of obstacles because millimeter wave cannot really deal with those obstacles. Uh, on, 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 on the receiver level, on the level of the head mounted device, we are using the head rotation. So we are trying to predict the near future head rotations of the users in order to account for them and then and, and kind of re-steer the, the, the receive beam towards the direction of the access point as, as the user rotates. So this is kind of depicted here. You can see that we utilize historical and current locations, uh, historical and current locations for predicting near future locations uh, of the user. And then this is used for, for optimizing the beam steering. And if you're interested in more details, please uh, check the work of, of, of uh, Jakob Struje. And, uh, and to conclude, uh, oh, well, this is a work in progress. Uh, we have, at the moment, we're providing the, the software tools that are needed uh, for, for supporting such simulations. But please don't just use this tool. We, we are still working on it and we're assessing it experimentally. And then uh, we will probably need to fine tune it in the near future uh, so that we kind of try to encapsulate a bit more realism into it. Uh, the future usage is envisioned along multiple dimensions. One of them is going to be comparative benchmarking of different redirected walking algorithms for in multi-user setups. We will be integrating this tool uh, with NS3 as a physical mobility module for wireless networks for multi-user VR setups, full immersive VR setups. Uh, we will be introducing the new addition, uh, new mobility patterns such as line, or I think line is already supported by zigzag, realistic VR traces, etc. We will be implementing obviously novel redirected walking algorithms and, and, and we will be implementing additional approaches for near future uh, physical trajectory predictions. So please, uh, please stay tuned. <laughs>